All right, it's time for last minute Jarvan, and thank God I love myself some Jarvan games. Which one? So, as you all know, Jarvan is my favorite champion, and I don't actually play him too much. Uh, it's a uh, thing that people kind of ask me a lot. Stonewall, you say Jarvan's your favorite champion, but we never see you play him. That's the thing is, when I <clears throat> when I want to win, I play Jarvan. When I just want to show, you know, showcase fun games and stuff to the to the play, I mean the viewers, I play somebody else. Anyways, attack damage red, attack damage quince, armor yellow, magic resistance blues, and twenty one nine zero mastery. So, red to blue start, and I look at how Ari's positioned. I know one hundred percent fact that Lee Sin would come ganker. So I sit here. I'm just waiting for Lee Sin to show up because this is like the most perfect ganking position for Lee Sin to have come in. So jump him and start slashing at him and just kind of force him off. It, it, uh, his flash is gone too and that's the best part. <clears throat> so that's already an advantage game there just by knowing where Lee Sin would be. Lissandra has too much of a chance to escape and Jace isn't the best assist for ganks. And uh, what you call it, Lozareth can actually do a lot of damage. So here, I, I thought, you know, this would be an easy kill in the Lee Sin. I thought I'd catch him in Wolves, and I thought I'd be sneaky. Turns out they knew it was coming. And Thresh ended up showing up. If it was 2v2, we would probably would have won. But with Thresh showing up, it was bad. Cassandra comes in down mid, too, just to start helping. And unfortunately, she's going to die as well. I'll get a kill on the Thresh, and I'll also get a kill on the Lee Sin after I flash for him to slap him in the face. But so Lucian and Chase both come mid and finish me off. So it's just like a fucking party. So, unfortunately, the enemy team gains a huge <clears throat> gains a huge advantage here. Lissandra died, so she didn't get to farm. Jace got a, uh, got an assistance from all that stuff, and Zerath has double buffs, plus two kills, and an assist. So Zerath is rolling in dough right now, and I'm gonna have to make sure to try to kill him at some point. But it's difficult because the enemy team seems to have tabs on me throughout the entire thing. Now. So, no, like I said, Jarvan is my favorite champion, and I've gone on rants about why he is. But it's, you're going to notice it in this game a lot. I like being able to start fights on my own terms. And I like to be able to control the fight constantly throughout the, uh, throughout the, well, the skirmish. Like there's champions like Malphite. They initiate and they kind of then just don't do anything after that. They, they stick on somebody and, you know, reduce their attack speed and kind of go about the day. Jarvan, three gap closers if you include a summoner spell. Lots of damage. Lots of utility that isn't, you know... Uh, what you call it? it, it isn't just always effective. You got to use it pro uh, properly and it varies in effectiveness. And simply put, like the ultimate is like a boner inducing one. By the way, here, uh, the Leona just pretty much got destroyed and I was in a bad position and I was hoping to sort of have them try to dive and I EQ them under the towers, but instead I have to settle for just killing the Lucian. Flash forward, ultimate, and he's kind of got to die by the tower. So it's not as bad as it would... We, uh, as bad as it could have been. Nobody else died except him. However, this is as bad as it could be. I go to my blue and I figured Leeson would be there. And so I had a ping to the Ari. But unfortunately, I died. So Leeson has an advantage over me right now. He's got my blue. He's got a refresh red from my death. He's got two kills and one assist and two assists. Uh, one death and two assists. Still, though, uh, as far as contribution to team goes, I figure Leeson ranks below Jarvan. Here, uh, Ari pretty much gets and dodges everything, or the enemy team misses everything. I end up coming, just showing my face, and it forces Zeroth's flash away. Unfortunately for us, here comes Lee Sin again, and I flash forward and absorb his kick. And then I ult him under the tower, so he ends up getting killed there. I'm still going to get dropped, and the double boss is going to be transferred to the Zeroth yet again. But again, it's not as bad as it could have been. Now here, I don't understand his flash at all. You know, like, flash, just... There's nothing coming at you, but the no, a chase proceeds. The Ari and the Lissandra kind of try to want want to get those double buffs. I believe Lucian shows up right now. Yes, Lissandra is in the enemy jungle. She gets cut off by everybody. Uh, Lissandra catches the Zareth, and Ari picks up the kill. There you go. Again, the situation could have been worse, and it definitely became worse because they stuck around a little too long. So there goes Lissandra, and then there goes Ari again. And the double buffs get transferred back onto Lee Sin. So, you know, there's some little bit of swapping going around here, a little, a little porno action. So, by the way, another great thing about Jarvan, as you've always known, is I love the diversity in builds. If I'm doing well, I can build damage and I can destroy people. If I'm, if I'm not doing well, I just go tank. 
if uh, I'm doing mix or I can just change my build on the go. He's more expensive than other tanks, but it's uh, it's kind of a mood point with somebody who has as much utility as Jarvan. Plus, he's one of the very few uh, initiators that are pure physical with a kind of like a f true form of initiation. Like... Lee Sin survives this and it makes me really sad and we just kind of dodge all of the Zerath blasts. It's like nothing came out of that. It was really sad too. So Lee Sin gets to survive yet for another day. But of course this game has been in a lot of close calls and it's a, honestly a very close game and it's kind of exciting to watch. Thresh comes in, steals my blue wraith and I'm sad. Anyways, nonetheless. Jar Jarvan to me came at a time where I was just like wanting a another initiator who could just control the a fight, who can just make an immediate impact and continue to doing so across the whole game. Like at the time I played a lot of uh, Garen and I played a lot of uh, Malphite and such and that was, that was cool enough but I needed someone who, you know, just the epitome of manliness. So yeah, Jarvan came out. I tried him out, and I was just blown away. And ever since then, ever since season one, he was my uh, my go-to tank fighter, or whatever. And back in season one, when uh, people were getting mad at me, why aren't you trying to be ranked? And I say I hate ranked. And he goes, Well, then you suck at the game. So in a fit of rage, and because he had a victorious skin coming out, I played a bunch of games, and I only played Jarvan, Jarvan, and I believe uh, Lee Sin. Once he Jarvan started getting banned. Because uh, people started realizing, hey, look, Jarvan's really fucking good. So they started banning Jarvan, and I decided, you know, I got to pick somebody else. My, I think my top, my, my top champions were like Xin Zhao, Jarvan, and Lee Sin. There was a lot of manliness. And if I ever played top lane, I believe it was still just Jarvan. Jarvan, Jarvan, nonstop. Nonetheless, we, we catch the enemy team, and this is kind of the turning point. We pretty much got a sort of delayed ace, and you can see all the pings going out. I jump up to Jace here because he got CC'd and everything, and I thought he would die before I needed to use my ultimate, or unfortunately didn't. And and unfortunately, this, this Jace survives, and the Lee Sin has to waste his flash, but he does too. It's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, again, silver linings of this whole thing. It's This whole game has been silver linings. I should probably name your team battle silver linings, but... Anyhow... Jarvan became my go-to dude. And, like, even when he gets nerfed, I'll play him. Though, I really hated his EQ nerf for the longest time because it seemed really unfair. But again, I don't play him too much because if I play, if I wanted really to win, I would only be playing Jarvan. And you guys would probably get sick of it. I mean, how many Jarvan games do I have? How many team battles? How many rank battles on, on YouTube? I'm pretty sure it's starting to push close to 20 at this point. Nonetheless... I get caught by the Thresh, but then he gets murdered. I get thrown into the pit by Lee Sin, and then he gets murdered. So, uh, that's a worthwhile trade. Uh, it's one, one of me for two of them. As you can see, well, actually, no, this is a good fight. The the Jace is just trying to kill the Ari, and if he gets vision of her, he will destroy her. But, of course, you. I hope you noticed how she used her ultimate. She kept going into the bushes in order to avoid Jace's ab ability to attack her. Jace is, you know... Pure, all about his auto attacks, aside from his, you know, Q. So if he couldn't hit her, if he couldn't auto attack her, then it means he couldn't hit her, at least until she reveals herself. So by using her ultimate to go in the bush, he she denies Jace one second, which is one auto attack of her dealing damage to her. So she did that twice. She probably would have still killed Jace because her teammates were coming in to finish him off, but that was still pretty brilliant. And uh, I want to give the player credit, and I'm assume he knew about the whole line of sight thing and he was taking advantage of it. Anyhow, anyhow, well, there's another thing that, about Jarvan that it that kind of uh, fits a lot of the motif of why I enjoy him. Like one of my favorite Marvel characters, or well, my actually favorite Marvel character is Captain America. And it, it, while uh, Captain America's patriotism is more of a you know the American dream embodied without the fanaticism and everything, and Jarvan is kind of fanatic. They're still kind of similar in their whole, you know, for my country, for the, for the justice and shit. Even though Jarvan's a little bit more fanatic. I, I think he could be that villain that, you know... There's a Captain America villain that's, uh, that's you know, quote-unquote Captain America. How uh, Europeans might have envisioned him, you know, fanatic. Either way, it's kind of the same vein of it. Either way, you can see, right... I, I am saying either way to my sorry about that. Anyhow... You can see that my team sort of is getting the advantage now. We've taken control of the map. We've gotten a few key fights, and we still haven't gotten a dragon, but we really want to. 
But watch how this goes. Jace gets close to the a bush. Well, actually, no, Thresh gets in, and we just dive him and easily murder him. Jace gets caught in the bush, and then all these CC just gets blown up on him, and he gets picked off, well, by me. He flashes into me, and I stab him. The RA dies, and I'm just waiting for an opportunity to get the Lucian, and unfortunately, just watch how this happens. I actually do get the EQ off on him. EQ. But he has a heal, and he survives it, and even the flash doesn't get, flash out attack doesn't go off. So Vayne, unfortunately, is also in a bad spot, because she wanted to, she thought she could finish off the Lucian in case I didn't, and then she ended up paying the price as well. So... Yeah, we kind of swung it, swung the favor back in their way, and they got themselves a dragon, so the, it's closing closing the gap again. Unfortunately for the enemy team, my team comp is just a billion times better. Even though they have some poke with Zareth and Jace, they don't have any true initiation. Yes, Lee Sin can initiate, but like on but in comparison to Jarvan, it isn't something you can uh, rely on. You can see Lee Sin's thing coming. You can flash to avoid it. You can flash to avoid Jarvan's too, but you won't be in a better position to, you know, punish him for it. And besides, Jarvan has two forms of initiation that you one that both that you can flash out of, but you can't flash out of them successively. So my EQ fails, I can still ult somebody, and I'm still usually I have a I'm in a better position than uh, the Lee Sin to kind of escape from my mistakes. Here I'm just trying to block the Lee Sin and just. Trying to avoid him, you know, kicking somebody back in. He eventually got in, but at this point, his entire team just died. He, I Q back to my flag to knock him back up, and he just pretty much gets murdered. This fight here, where we pretty much aced them all, is the the massive, like, game maker. It's still a long game. We can still lose this, but it's kind of like an up, making it an uphill battle for the enemy team. My team got a lot of gold, a lot of resources to pretty much buff ourselves up, while the enemy team got zero. They got nothing. So while we're stronger, they're the same as before. So if they thought the last team fight was one-sided, now it's just even worse. Still though, you can see I'm going tanky now. I'm buying my, my team my team a locker of the Iron Solari. And this is what I do when I feel I can actually trust my team. Like if you if you ever feel like you're, you can't trust your team, you might as well go a more selfish build. Something that kind of only benefits you, but if you feel your team is trustworthy and you can they, you can expect them to help carry you or carry the team, and then buy stuff like a Locket of the Iron Solari, Randuin Doman, Frozen Heart, stuff that doesn't benefit only you, but you know, it ripples around your team. Now this next part is just really, really grim. The enemy team gets caught and two of their teammates just instantly blow up, so they lose two of their key members. Thresh and Jace. Jace for the poking and Thresh uh, for actually making plays. And with that, we're able to push even further. Of course, uh, of course, we can't really push because we don't have the minion wave. So, and Zareth is really strong at pushing back. So we unfortunately have to back up. And we kind of are going to make a huge mistake here. Lee Sin jumps in and Lissandra easily avoids that. And that's kind of what I mean by Lee Sin's initiation being kind of like not reliable. We really want to kill them, and we feel if we jumped them, it would be good. But as I try to use EQ, I get hooked up, and my Q won't go off. So, all I got is my ultimate, and it sort of cut off my teammates, but they got a few good bits of damage there. Thresh gets killed, but the rest of my teammates just get annihilated here. That was an unfortunate uh, thing that happened. If I had gotten my EQ, the enemy team might have all just died. They might have all perished, because they would have bought my team enough time to do even more damage. So, that's just unfortunate for me. Still though, my team still my team is still high above, and we are able to get them. You know, still make a lot of plays. I hope you saw that, by the way. I used my W first to remove Lee Sin's Banshee's Veil, and then used EQ to hit all three of them. Thresh easily died, and my teammates are coming in, and I sort of got them uh, got them to chase me so I can EQ them up in a straight line. And I kill the least, I mean the Lucian, and of course I'm gonna die right after, but it's fine. You know, my teammates get three kills out of that. So we get a 3 for 2 on that one. But again, I'll repeat. Watch that scene again. I used my W to remove Lee Sin's shield from Banshee's Veil. And EQ'd all three of them to buy my vein some time. She died though, but we managed to kill one of their members. And after that, I made them chase me. So they'd end up getting in a straight line and EQ'd back. So my teammates could get some more time to show up and finish them off. But also, you know, like I said, to, so my EQ would hit them all over again. All of them at the same time. So... Great advantages by, well, great, great plays by pretty much everybody here. The Ari is doing the work. The Leona's ultimates are beautiful. And, of course, 
and like just the follow up to everything we do. Like the Ari goes in, makes a play, and I know this is my chance. Go in, EQ. The Jace would have died anyways, and the Lee Sin gets annihilated. I'm never comfortable doing Baron if the Lee Sin is alive, because his stealing powers are just ridiculous. We catch the Zeroth, and we can get the Baron, so that's three kills for one, and also a Baron. Lissandra unfortunately died. And uh, still, though, great advantages everywhere, and great playmaking by my teammates. We got a uh, uh, turret and we got an inhibitor, but we still can't push from the Nexus Towers. We only do a little bit of damage, and we're forced to back up. So we back up. We, get, we steal the blue real quickly, and uh, we finally actually secure a dragon. Hooray! And we go home. Now, here's one thing. Though. Usually, one of the hardest things people... Uh, one of the hardest things to... Uh, well, one of the hardest things for people to grasp is what's your last item to build on anything? Unless you are pocketing wars and it's your fifth item. Uh, if you're doing very well, then you usually want to just amplify whatever you're doing already. Like if you're if you're initiating and you're getting somebody down, build damage, and that's what I've been doing. I've been usually being able to get uh, the Lucian or the Squishy Zareth. So with a, a black cleaver, I could probably gut them and destroy them. But if in most team fights I was, you know, behind and being the defensive dude, then I probably would have wanted uh, another defensive item, Sunfire Cave or War Monk's armor or something. But again, since I'm the initiator, time for some damage. And right now we're just trying to pick off somebody, and the Thresh will catch the Leona. He catches the Leona, right? Now nah, there you go. Catches her, and unfortunately is that the, the worst target. And pulling her in made everybody do damage to her. And it allowed us all to initiate. So I get two people and the damage just comes pouring in. Thresh gets melted. Vayne just goes ham on the enemy team. And Lee Sin dies. Jace is nowhere to be caught, uh, nowhere safe. And I just EQ onto the Zareth after flashing and he gets killed. So 4 for 0 once again. Lucian has no chance of doing anything for his teammates to defend this. And with that, it's a clear cut victory. And I know I uploaded a lot of J uh, Jarvan games, but this Jarvan game itself was really, really fun for me. It was... I actually, my heart was actually beating because I really wanted Diamond. And this one was probably the toughest game I played.